And so, um, anyway, I, you know, I try to pick it out. This time it was a little bit difficult because um, the thing I'm going to talk about today, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. I don't know, do I need to move this mic? Okay. Thy kingdom come. And um, off and on we've been touching on different components of the model prayer lately. And all week long, this title was there, Thy Kingdom Come. And a lot of believers, you know, and followers of Yahshua, Jesus, um, don't understand about the kingdom. And I think it's important for us to know more and to get to understand more about the kingdom and what it has to offer and uh, how it pertains to us, okay? And so I'm going to pray. And first of all, before I even get into this, I want to welcome our visitors. Um, do you want? Do you want to have a word? Do you want to? Say, no, no, no. Well, you know, I never keep my mouth shut. <laughs> I just want to praise God. Amen. For Amen. coming today. Yes. And for everything He's been doing for me and yes. my ministry. Yes. And I want to thank you for having us today. Oh, you're so welcome. She. she um, she mostly ministers in Kentucky. She lives here. And so she is always driving back and forth between here and Kentucky. And uh, sometimes at a moment's notice, yeah. if somebody has a need. And, um, and in fact, she's been a blessing to peace, blessings, and joy. You know, sometimes there's um, things that we, we may uh, need to be able to, to share with people. For example, um, it was a while back and we needed um, uh, personal hygiene products and stuff to take to the people downtown. And she came with like a big boatload of different things, you know, and we made packets, you know. We have a little bit left, you know, that we still give out to the people when we go down there. Uh, toothpaste, toothbrushes, all, just all kinds of things. And, um, you know, and then um, whenever there's some... Um, uh, food items and she's uh, that she gets or she finds out about and um, you know and she thinks we might be able to use she'll call or text and you know and 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 supply that need and these days it's it's just so important to be able to have you know these different um, uh, places and people ministries to um, you know to come together and help one another um, because a lot of the pantries are running out of food and, you know, uh, a lot of people are struggling because of the um, inflation and, 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 and things like that, you know. Unfortunately, people's pay, you know, um, that they get does not keep up with inflation. And so, you know, people are struggling today. And so, uh, you know, she helps to uh, fill the gaps in many ways and, um, you know, and even connects us with other people um, that help out as well for the pantry. So um, thank you for that. Appreciate it. Uh, that, that is such a blessing. So she ministers here in the city, but her the main part is, is in Kentucky. So, yeah, I do know. the shut-in, the homeless, literally just the ones that are really needy. Yes. They don't have anything to offer. Yeah, and when there was a flood down in Kentucky, she, uh, I mean, she loaded up her truck with bottled water and, you know, because they couldn't drink the water that was down there. You know, and she took other things down there to help uh, uh, some of those people there in Kentucky. So she's a real blessing. And I'm glad you're here, both of you. And I understand that you sing. That's what she told me. She said, you sing. I do sing. Okay. He's head in my music. Okay, all right, okay. So we'll be talking a little bit later. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm glad you're here. And we have someone that came to us all the way from Arizona. Is that right? <laughs> we are so blessed. <laughs> and do you have anything to say? Uh, I'm just glad to be here. Okay, all right. That was short and sweet, and we're glad to have you. All right. Welcome, all of you. Um, 
and anybody online that's a first time visitor online, I want to say to you, welcome. And uh, if any of you don't have a church home, you are welcome to be part of this body of Christ. This, this part of the body of Christ, all right? You're always welcome. All right. Um, you know, as I was saying, thy kingdom come is um, what I'm going to be talking about today. And I'm standing. <laughs> I do have my little cane on the side. And I have a chair behind me just in case. But, um, yes, yes, <laughs> praise and glory, I tell you. Um, he, he is, wow, it's easy for me to talk about miracle signs and wonders through the Most High. And because that's what he does. And this is, this is one of the reasons I think um, being kingdom minded, um, you know, is, is important because we are, those that are believers and followers of Yahshua, we are in the kingdom. And so um, I want to talk about that, but I'm going to, it's going to be a lot of things in there and it might be uh, some things that some of you have heard, some of you haven't heard. If you have questions, uh, those online, you can message me, you can put it in the comments, those here. If you want to write them down, we can talk about it after the service, or we can talk on the phone later, or however you want to do that. Um, and because I'm going to touch upon, touch upon a lot of different points, and some of them, um, well, we'll just take it as it comes. All right. <laughs> All right. So our first scripture, and let me pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you once again for your many blessings. I thank you for every person that's here. I thank you for the... Uh, the one that came but had to leave and just bless her indeed bless her uh, with 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 good rest and rejuvenation and um, you know and take care of every need that she has and and then uh, I pray in regards to the message that it will um, uh, go to receptive hearts and minds and that your word your truth will be proclaimed that you will speak through me, not my agenda, but according to your perfect will. And I give you all the glory in Yahshua's name. Amen. Okay. Our, our first scripture, our first scripture is in Luke. Luke chapter 1, verses 31 through 33. Luke chapter 1, verses 31 through 33. And we also have it up on the screen for those that, that need that. Um, in this particular case, um, this is talking about the, the birth of Yahshua, you know, uh, being foretold. And this microphone's kind of, let me move this up so I can see, uh, put this in the light and still be able to see it. Okay. So let me read, and then I'm going to talk about this for a little bit. Um, Luke 1, verses 31 through 33. It says, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name. In, in, in some Bibles it says Jesus. His name actually is Yahshua. Um, and I'll explain more about that in a few minutes, all right? Yahshua. It says, and he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and um, Yahweh, the most high God, shall give unto him the throne of his father David and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Of his kingdom shall be no end. Now, I'm saying this, um, I'm saying this because I'm starting here, not because of people celebrating Christmas um, because he wasn't born during this time. Of Tell year. the truth. Okay. Fine. He wasn't born. So 
But I'm reading this because it's talking about the kingdom. And it says in verse 33, and of his kingdom, there shall be no end. There shall be no end. Yeah. So from the beginning of him being here and establishing his kingdom while he was here, that kingdom continues to this day and will continue beyond this, okay? And so I want to talk about this kingdom. In, um, in Luke 2.11, Luke 2.11, let's just go over a, a, a couple uh, pages here, Luke 2.11, and it says, And unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which in the King James it says, Christ the Lord, but it's Yahshua HaMashiach, okay? Uh, yeah. All right, and that's, it, and, it, and, and, and in other ones, um, it says, Savior, Messiah, the, the Sovereign One. There is none above Him. He is the only one. He is the Messiah. He is the King of Kings. Okay? And so, um, when we come to, I had mentioned, you know, why, uh, and, and some of you already know why I use the term Yahshua instead of Jesus. Okay? So, let me explain. Um, the name Yahshua means salvation of Yah. Shall, and Yah means uh, the Father, Abba, Abba Yah. Uh, Shua means salvation. And so when we say Yahshua, it means the salvation of Yah, because Yah, the Most High God, is the one that made a way out of no way because we couldn't do anything for ourselves. He made a way for us to be able to come to Him and to spend eternity with Him, but it only comes through Yahshua HaMashiach. Uh, uh, in, 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 in English terms, Jesus the Messiah. Okay? And so... Uh, we look at the word or the name Jesus. I want to say this. Uh, it's a Latin, Latin, Latinized Greek name using the newest uh, 14th century letter J. Because that letter J didn't exist back then. And, um, and the A, you know, um, because some people say yes, Yeshua, Y-E-F, but it's Y-A-H, -E, uh, Yah. Uh, the A uh, was shifted to an E in the ninth century, and then um, you know a gradual name in change in the name of Yahshua went to Jesus, which takes out Yah the Father. Okay, so I say Yahshua because he is from the Father; he is part of the Father, and so I don't want to take the Father out of it. Okay, and so I say Yahshua. Uh, it's like the word hallelujah. Yes. Okay, uh, I say hallelujah, Y-A-H, as opposed to J-A-H, because hallelujah means um, to praise Yahweh, to pra in which Yah is part of Yahweh. And so hallelujah means to praise Yahweh. And, and so that's why I say it the way I say it, all right? Just just for clarification so you all know. Uh, again, if you have questions and, you know, whatever, you know, you can make a note of it and you can see me later, uh, whether you're online or in person. Um, anyway, moving right along. In, uh, as I said, in verse 33, it says, And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Now, the scripture tells us that the word is to go to the Jew first, or 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 the uh, Hebrew first, and then the Greek or the Gentile. All right, and so now it's for everyone, um, and so uh, it applies for everyone. And even back then, anyone, and you know, because you look in the Exodus and 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 um, those um, scriptures, it says, and the stranger that is with them. So it's always been somebody along with 
the Hebrew people that weren't born Hebrew, all right? So, and they were accepted. So uh, no man is without excuse. No one will be able to say, well, you only had it for the Hebrew people, you didn't have it. No, he did make it available for every person. And so um, anyway, so it says that he will reign over the house of, and it says, Jacob, I will say Israel forever. And uh, whether it's a person that has, uh, that's a natural born Hebrew, Israelite, or one that has been grafted in. It's all the same. And so um, he will reign. Now, uh, and his kingdom shall be established forever. His king, like I said, his kingdom began while he was here on earth, and it will continue even through the millennium, okay? It's, his kingdom is always going. If we look at Isaiah, uh, the second chapter, verses uh, 1 through 4. Let's go to Isaiah, second chapter. All right, Isaiah, second chapter, verses, did I say second chapter? Yeah, I said second. All right. Verses one through four. And it says, In the word of Isaiah, the son of Amos, concerning Judah and Jerusalem, or in, and in actuality, it would be uh, Judah and Jerusalem, it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house or Yahweh's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted over the hills and all nations shall flow into it. And many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh and to the house of, of um, the most high God of, ya uh, of Jacob sorry, or Israel. And he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his path for out of Zion so go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem and he shall judge among the nations and he shall rebuke many people and they shall beat their swords into the plow uh, shares and their spears into the pruning hooks nations shall not lift up sword against nation neither shall they learn war anymore this is talking about when he comes back for the kingdom, when he establishes his kingdom here on earth. And so, um, and it will be, you know, on, in, in, in Jerusalem, it will be in that high place. If you look at the elevation of Jerusalem, it's higher than other places. And so he will establish his, um, his, his, his throne in that place, and he will rule from that place. Now, in order to have a kingdom... Uh, and I don't want to get ahead of myself on these notes, but um, in order to have the kingdom, you got to have a king, all right? You first of all have to have a king, and he is the king. And um, and not only that, and yeah, I did get away from my notes. Not only that, <laughs> I do that all the time. Not only that, he's the king, and if we... and. With him being the king, and we are looking to him as our king, then that means that we are going to line ourselves up with his word, with his rules, with his ways, okay? We're going to line ourselves up with that, all right? Let me get back on track here. Um, in, in Continuing in Luke, Luke 2 and 8 says... Um, their land also is full of, I, wait a minute, I'm, I'm in Isaiah, let me go back, Luke 2 and 8, because um, I was in Luke. Okay, Luke 2 and 8 talks about the birth of Christ, of Yahshua, his birth. And it says, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, watching their flocks by night. Now, I had mentioned earlier that uh, Yahshua was not born in this time of year. Okay. Um, this is one of the keys because the shepherds kept watch uh, in the fields from Passover, which is March, April, 
through um, the first rain, which happens around in October. So um, this puts it around the Feast of Trumpets when he was born. It's one of the feast days when he was born in that time, not in December, okay? But, um, you know, I, point, I wanted to point that out because I think it's important for us to, um, you know, focus on the word, to focus on what he has for us as opposed to uh, traditions and uh, of man, okay? And so, uh, and it's not always easy, but being in the body of Christ, we are a set apart people. We, we're not like everybody else. That's why they said, we, you know, a peculiar nation, because, you know, and when it comes to certain things, we're gonna stick out like a sore thumb because we're not lining ourselves up with the things of the world, but we're lining ourselves up with the things of the most high God, the things that's in his word, according to his will and according to his way. Does that mean that we won't, uh, won't ever mess up? No, sometimes we will, and that's all right. I mean, when I say I, that's all right, I mean that we, if we repent, if we turn away from it, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so that's all part of being in the kingdom because he is our king and we follow what he says. All right. Isaiah, um, talking more about his birth in Isaiah 7 and 14, it says, and, and, it's, and it's repeated also in Matthew 1. Uh, and in fact, we'll go to Matthew 1, verses 18, excuse me, through 25. We'll go over there. Um, and so we will, um, let's see, Matthew 1, 18 through 25. And it is uh, the same, I mean verbatim, as Isaiah 7, 14. The four, yeah, and so, uh, let me see, Matthew I thought I had that one. And unfortunately, I can't see that far on that monitor. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm going to read Matthew 1, verses 18 through 25. But um, um, Matthew 1, let's see. Okay, verses 18, verse 18. Now the birth of Yeshua HaMashiach was on this wise. When his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. And Joseph, her husband, um, being a just man and not willing to make a public example, was uh, minded to put her away privately. But when he thought on those things, behold, an angel appeared, um, Behold, the angel of the Most High appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, do not take unto um, thee, Mary, thy wife, for that which is, wait a minute, yeah, fear not to take unto thee, Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and, um, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahshua, for he shall save his people from their sins. And now, uh, now all this was done, and it, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the um, of Yahweh by the prophet, saying, "Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which, being interpreted, is uh, Yahweh with us." And Joseph, being uh, uh, raised from his sleep, did as the angel of the Most High had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not until she had brought forth um, her firstborn son and called his name Yahshua. Okay, now, I read all of that. Uh, again, that last verse, verse 25, is the same as Isaiah 7, 14. Now, um, this is his birth, and as I said, this was the beginning of this of this kingdom being established. All right. So we go now to Matthew the fourth chapter, and this is going to talk about his kingdom. Matthew the fourth chapter, verses twenty-three, uh, is where we'll start. 
verse 23, and we'll read to 25. And it says, And Yahshua went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick that were taken with uh, diverse diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those which had the palsy, and he healed them. All right, I want you, I want you to know that um, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he is still a healer. Hallelujah. All right, verse 25, and there followed him a great multitude of people from Galilee and from Decapolis and from Jerusalem, Jerusalem, and uh, Judah, Judah, and from uh, Jordan, Jordan, okay? So those people, this is, he started establishing, he's going around, He's not preaching at the, and teaching at this time that he is going to suffer and die for their sins. He is preaching and teaching the kingdom message, the good news of the kingdom. And so this is what we need to be doing is telling people about the kingdom of the most high God. They look at this world and they see everything that's going on in this world. And most people have uh, 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 gloom and doom. Uh, in regards to what's happening in the world. There's so much craziness that's going out there. But but if they know about the kingdom of the most high God and, and, and how good it is, then that gives them hope. That's the light at the end of the tunnel that opens up to the whole big kingdom, okay? And so if they can see that, and the only way they're going to see it is through us. It's the only way. We got to show them. We got to represent. We got to be that light in those dark places. And so when they see that, we can share the, the, the gospel, the kingdom, the good news of the kingdom with them. Okay? And so, but here's some things. Well, let me go on in, in regards to this. He, he um, in chapter 5, now, uh, he goes on in chapter 5. And then he starts talking about the Beatitudes, and, and he goes into some laws. And he starts talking, you know, um, talking about different laws and, and things like that. Now, if you're going to have a kingdom, you've got to have laws. I mean, you've got to have rules. That's just how it is. In order for things to be in order, okay? In order for things to be pleasing to the Most High, you've got to have laws, all right? And so... Um, in, verse, in chapter 5, he talks about the laws of the kingdom, and he starts with the blessings, and then he moves into um, uh, some of those thou shalt not, you know, some of those things that we, we shouldn't be doing. He gets into that. So looking at Matthew 5, verses uh, 17 and 18, and when you get a chance, you know, just look at all of this. And again, you know, you can, um, if you have a quick, I don't know everything, but, you know, uh, if you have a question, just let me know. All right, 17 and 18. And he says, um, Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall no, in no wise pass from the law until all be fulfilled. And so, so this is the other thing he came to do. In order to accomplish his his uh, his task, his sacrifice, he had to be the one. It had to be somebody that would be able to uh, uh, fulfill every part of the law, from the smallest to the biggest, all the way, without leaving anything out. He was the only one, and that's what he came to do. And he accomplished that, all right? He accomplished that, because that is one of the things that's one of the things um, uh, that made him worthy to be sacrificed. It had to be a lamb without blemish. Yes. And yes. he was that lamb without blemish. And so, anyway, um, and, and, and another time I want to talk, um, 
No, I'm gonna leave that alone. Okay, all right. And so he's he's saying, you know, he goes into. Uh, let me kind of look down through chapter five, and he's talking about all these things. You know, he's talking about adultery. He's talking about anger and reconciliation. He's, you know, how we treat our anim, uh, our neighbors, our our. Um, in, he talks about divorce. He talks about oaths and, and retaliation. I mean, he's just going on and he's talking about all these things. And so, you know, he's explaining these, these, these particular laws to the people. And so, like I said, if there's a king, you know, there must be a kingdom to rule, and which means there must be rules and there must be laws. All right. Now, um, otherwise, if we didn't have laws, we would have lawlessness. Right. Now we know the scripture tells us in the last days there's going to be lawlessness mm -hmm. and we're seeing more and more um, people that are going into lawlessness, you know, because maybe it's a law or something they don't agree with or maybe in, uh, you know, and, and, and I could go on and on in that, but it has to be every kingdom, every country, every state, every city, you know, all have laws they all have laws all right um scripture tells us and let's look at um first corinthians 14 40. uh and, and it's just a simple scripture and it says let all things be done decently and in order and so in order for that to happen we have to have laws there has to be rules when you play a game uh and you get a new game and you want to play this game what's the first thing you do Okay, let's see what the rules say. If you if you want to play fair, all right. But <laughs> it might be some that just want to win by any means possible, but we won't address that, okay? We're just going to say that everybody's going to read the rules and <laughs> follow the rules to play the game, you know. And um, and sometimes, and I, I said this at work, Some um, when something new would come up, I would be like, well, if they tell me the rules I know how to play the game you know it's like okay but anyway so so it's got to be some of that all right and so um um you know every every city every I mean everybody has them and so um in the scriptures there's 613 laws now that will scare some people they say oh we got to do all that no you don't no you don't because different laws pertain to different things and different people in different situations. And so, you know, so not all of those laws apply. I will tell you, keep the 10. <laughs> keep the 10, all right? And so anyway, uh, when, we look at, when we look at Indiana, <laughs> the Indiana Code, I went to look that up because I wanted to see how many laws Indiana had. I could not find a number it just had it just went on and on and on all right so anyway um so you know i was looking at that and uh so here's here's an example of some of the laws or some of the segments or uh, uh, uh of the indiana code as they pertain to laws we have laws for family we have family laws commercial laws probate laws, laws regarding the insurance industry, the financial industry, various trades, um, various trades and professions. We also have laws pertaining to labor and safety, laws pertaining to property, laws pertaining to nonprofit. We have criminal laws and we have so many other laws. Okay, but if you don't sell insurance then you don't need to know the laws pertaining to selling insurance okay uh the same with real estate if you don't sell it you don't need to know the laws pertaining to real estate um and the same with any of these others um if you don't have a non-profit then you might not need to worry about learning the laws pertaining to the non-profit um, and, and you also have to keep up with the new laws. I saw a, another uh, thing where it says 19, I mean 19, oh, where am I? Okay, 2022 
new laws. Now, it is our responsibility to know these new laws and if they apply, uh, to find out about it and if they apply, you know, then we need to, we know that we need to, you know, kind of follow that. And uh, if they don't, then, you know, we just cast that out. But we don't need to know all, I mean, have, do, obey all the laws because they don't all apply to us. And so when we look at the laws, um, the 630, they don't all apply to us. Let's just do the 10, okay? I put five hands up, five fingers, 10. All right, <laughs> all right. So, um, but the bottom line is that there are laws that are necessary to govern a kingdom, all right? And so, Yahshua was our king, and he went around preaching and teaching about his kingdom, and he talked about the blessings, and he talked about the laws, and um, he didn't just talk it, he walked it, okay? He walked it. And so, you know, again, he is our example. We, you know, uh, we are to follow him. We are to, uh, he said, greater works than these shall you do in my name. And so we have to get into the mindset that he has set us up to be success successful, yes. to win, to be able to take back territory yes. from the enemy all right because the enemy comes to steal kill and destroy and he wants everybody he can get he doesn't care if it's somebody that's high up or low down he doesn't care he doesn't care if you have um uh credibility with your friends he will try to ruin your credibility he will try to bring you down not just you i'm talking about me too he will try to bring us down that's what he wants to do, and he'll do it by any means possible. But we have to understand that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And we have, we have uh, dominion, we have authority, we have the power of the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy yeah. Spirit, and we can overcome anything. He said if you speak to that mountain and tell that mountain to be moved into the sea, and, 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 and it shall be done. I mean, just tell it. We got to tell the mountain to be moved, and we can't be afraid of it. We can't uh, uh, draw back okay and when it comes to the gospel we gotta let people see the gospel in us when we walk down the, the street or in a store or whatever that we're supposed to um, uh, let him shine through us people, people should be able to look and say oh something different about that person I don't know what it is and sometimes and, and I know this has happened to other people and it's happened to me and that somebody will say something to you. What 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 is it? It's something about you. I don't know what it is, but it's something about you, and that opens the door to share the gospel. Yes, yes. Because people need what we have, yes. and we can't hold it back. We've got to open up our mouth, and we got to share it with them. We got to share the kingdom that He is the King, yes. and He is able to take care of us. He provides for us. And we have no want because of him, all right? Yes. Um, I know that, and I'm going to say this, um, you know, we have this uh, this outdoor pantry and in a, in, and also the indoor pantry, you know, where people can come in and get things, you know, that's refrigerated and frozen and all that. And, and then we have the stuff outside, you know, canned goods and whatever. And so, um, uh, you know, dry goods. And so um, there are times when we get really low and it's nothing, it's nothing. And somebody might call and say, you know, do you have this and this and this? I, it's just amazing. I don't know why it's amazing, but it's just amazing. He always works it out. Somebody will say, and in fact, with that outdoor camp, sometimes people will put stuff in it instead of taking stuff out of it. He always will provide, all right? Think about Hagar. Hagar was out in the wilderness with, with Ishmael. They were out in the wilderness, and, and they, they were out of water. They were in the desert. It was hot. They didn't have anything to drink. And she said, I don't want, my, I don't want to see my son die. I don't, I, so I want, I'm, I'm going to have my son over here. I'm going to go over here. And then she, she called on the name of the Most High God. And he, he said, I hear you. I see you. I know what's going on with you. And he provided that water. He provided what she needs. And she called him 
uh, Yahweh Roha, uh, and, which means the Most High God that sees me. He sees what we, I mean, everything. He knows exactly what's going on with us. And he stands ready to do whatever needs to be done to take care of us in any capacity, okay? He will open up doors that no man can close. And he'll close those things that he doesn't want us to go through. We just have to trust him. We just have to lean on him. And we have to talk to him and communicate with him and let him know what we need. Even though he knows what we need, we got to talk to him, all right? He wants that communication going between us, all right? And so... Anyway, Yahshua is the king of kings. I am so off. Okay, he is our redeemer. It, and all of this is possible because of his shed blood. Yes. All the things that he went through for us is why we can look to him, the author and finisher of our faith, and we can trust him, and we can lean on him. There is nothing impossible for him. Sometimes we'll sit there and we'll, and we'll look at things and we'll say, Whoa, oh, I don't know how this is going to work out. And then we turn it over to him. <laughs> and he always works it out for our good. Yes. Every single time, all right? Okay, so that's what the kingdom is all about. Following him. Trusting him. Giving our whole self to him. Be all in. Don't hold anything back. That's what the kingdom is all about. Nothing in this world can, can do for us the way he can do for us and we live and we walk in his kingdom we got to follow his guidelines but we live and we walk in his kingdom follow the ten all right anyway he ended his model prayer and you know like i said i have been going through different things different portions of the model prayer and he he ended his model prayer and he said Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come. The kingdom is expanding, had started back when he was here, and it's been growing ever since. We talked, we read where the people saw all these great miracles. They heard the message of the kingdom, and they, and they all flocked to him. And it went and it grew from there. And what started in this one town is now worldwide. We have all different ways of the word getting around. And so it is worldwide. And so uh, we it's the kingdom is constantly expanding, but we needed to expand more. We need to snatch people away from the enemy. Yes. We need to claim that territory. We need to take it back. All right? Yes. Yes. We need to take it back. Yes. All right? Yes. Now, let me, let me, let me go um, in regards to taking it back. Uh, Daniel, in the book of Daniel, he had a vision. In Daniel 7, 18. And I'm going to have to wrap it up here pretty soon. Daniel 7, 18. All right, this is an, is an experience explanation of one of his visions all right and it concerns the uh, uh uh the battle for the territory so if you want to read that whole chapter all right and the in, in the chapter before it says but the saints of the most high shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and even forever and ever Hallelujah. all right and and this is talking about um the fourth beast trying to take territory, but he has given us the authority, the power, the dominion to take it from the enemy. We can stop the enemy, yes. okay? We can, because yes. yes, greater is he that is in us. We rely on the power, the dominion, the authority of the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit that is in us. We are in a battle to win souls for the kingdom. We are in a battle to expand the kingdom. Our kingdom, or the kingdom, and, and, and Yahshua said it, uh, he said his kingdom is not of this world, you know? And so it's not. These, th this stuff on the earth, um, this is not it. The only time that he will establish an earthly kingdom is during the millennium. 
And I read a scripture in, in regards to that. Um, so his kingdom actually is in the spirit realm. And when we fight our battles, we fight our battles in the spirit realm. Because um, the enemy, that, that's where all these things are taking place. Now, a lot of stuff manifests in the physical world. And um, as long as we're attacking it in the physical world, we're not going to make any headway. You know, it'll be just little things here and there. We go to where it's really happening. We go to the spirit world and we take a stand and we take dominion and authority over the enemy. All right? That's what we do. And we take back territory from the enemy for the Most High God. All right? Okay. So then. Um, when we look at the kingdom, hmm, let's look at let's look at First Corinthians four and twenty. It says, "For the kingdom of Yahweh is not in word, but in power." Power. In Acts, it says, "You know that I will give you power." That's what the Holy Spirit does; gives us that power. All right. Uh, Romans 14, 17, for the kingdom of Yahweh is not meat or drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit, the Rosh HaKadosh, okay? Because here's the thing. We fight those battles, but we still have peace and joy on the inside. Hallelujah. Um, the enemy can't have it. The enemy will try to take it. The enemy will try to make you depressed, will try to make you... Um, uh, feel defeated, you know, making you just mess with your emotions and things like that. The enemy will mess with your head and tell you, no, you can't win. Uh, it's, and, 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 and your eyeballs will lie to you because your eyeballs will look mm -hmm. at things and make you think that you're seeing defeat. Mm -hmm. You cannot let your eyeballs deceive you, but let the word of the Most High God continue to encourage you yes. and let you know that you are not defeated Hallelujah. the enemy is a liar and yes. he will put all kinds of lies in your head and sometimes those lies will come from uh people that you care about people that you know mm -hmm. sometimes it'll come from a stranger sometimes it'll come from something you see on tv or hear on the radio or or watch on the internet there's a whole lot on the internet that's a lot on tv too but anyway um but the enemy will try to put all these things in your head and make you feel doom and gloom and all of that. And you can't let that take effect. As soon as that comes into your head or your mind or your emotions, you have to cast it out right then and there. Yes. Because if you let it linger, it's going to take a foothold inside of you. Yes. You've got to cast it out right away. Right. Cast out doubt. Cast out fear. All right? Fear. It's a big enemy of a lot of people. You gotta cast it out. Yes. Do you know fear, uh, fear is a demonic spirit? Yes, it, is. it is a demonic spirit. Cast it out. All right. Um, John three three. Joshua answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of Yahweh. Being born again, that's the key. That's the key. And so we have to tell people how to be born again. What do you need to do? Here's what you need to do. You know, and, 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 and let them know that it is only through Yahweh, the blood, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Savior, Mashiach, uh, Yeshua HaMashiach, our Savior. It is the only way. Believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus or Yeshua HaMashiach. Confess with your mouth that he came and died and he rose the third day. You know, that you confess that you are a sinner. You know that you are a sinner. And, 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 and that he came and he did all of that so that you could be set free. Hallelujah. Ooh, and the word says, hmm, whom the most high God sets free is free indeed. All right? Free indeed. All right, and then we, we um, uh, let me see. Look at Luke, Luke 17, 20 through 21. Luke 17, 20 through 21. Let me read that. Okay, I'm almost done. Uh, 20 through 21. 
And it says, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when, okay, when the kingdom of the Most High God should come, he answered and said, the kingdom of Yahweh, the Most High God, comes not with observation, neither shall they say, lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of the Most High God is in you. Hallelujah. That kingdom is in every believer yes. and follower of Yeshua, okay? Every one of us, the kingdom is in us. And we will expand the kingdom by drawing people to the Savior. All right. I have one more scripture. I read it before. Um, actually, I read it almost every week. Seek ye first the kingdom of the Most High God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. All right. That's all we need. That kingdom living, the, the good news of the kingdom, the death, burial, and resurrection of Yeshua HaMashiach, our Savior, our Messiah, okay? All right, let me pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you again. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your spirit and, 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 and how your spirit brings things to mind. And, and, um, and I just pray again that these words that you have uh, spoken through me will touch receptive hearts and minds, that, that people will want to get to know you better, that they will take a look at, um, at your rules, your, your laws that you have um, um, passed down, that you have given for us the, as a guide, um, as, as a way of life to, to be able to um, uh, be closer to you. We know the sin Come, puts a gap between uh, you and, and us. And so, you know, we, we want to confess our sins and we want to repent of our sins and we just want to uh, just just totally give ourselves to you. Use us this week. Let us be a witness for you. Let people see you in us for the expansion of your kingdom, for your glory. And we give you praise in Yahshua's name. Amen. All right. We're going to have a song, and then we're going to do prayer for healing. I'm selfishly, oh. died on Calvary. Oh, oh how about something for the other healing? Oh, I mean, bruised, scorned, crowned your head with thorns, no greater love. 